We talk a lot on this channel about how the music of Nier relates to the story, but only one track is actually in the story, Song of the Ancients. In the lore, the song originated at some point between the start of Project Gestalt and the game's main events, and the Chaos Language lyrics are supposedly about Grimoire Vice using the sealed verses to undo the curse of Grimoire Noir. In this interpretation, Grimoire Noir is basically characterized as a villain, even though in reality the two books are different sides of the same coin. But because Vice loses his memories, he does end up actually fighting Grimoire Noir, oblivious to his original purpose. This fight is scored by Song of the Ancients, which is both fitting and ironic. The fight appears to fit the story told by Song of the Ancients perfectly, but by trying to destroy Grimoire Noir, Vice is actually preventing the tale from coming true. So, thanks for nothing, Vice. Song of the Ancients does a lot of heavy lifting. It's a character theme for each of the twins, Devila and Popola, it's a backdrop for Nier's village, the plot draws special attention to it, and then it's thrown in our faces at the end of the game in as heartbreaking a way as possible. This piece comes in many forms, nine of them, in fact, but will mostly center on these three. The original arrangements of each twins theme, and the boss fight with first Grimoire Noir, and then the twins themselves. You saw the spoiler warning, right? Because if not, that's, um... How can I make this up to you? Oh, I can get you 83% off Atlas VPN for three years. If you're not so good at math, that's over four-fifths. That's like, that's a lot. If you took away 83% of me, I'd probably die. You know how sometimes there are those days where you're on the internet looking at snow globes, but your overbearing dad who works at your internet service provider calls you up and he's like, son, I told you not to look at those snow globes. And you're like, leave me alone, I'm an adult. And then he comes to your home and he drop kicks your computer and it breaks your neighbor's window and he makes you pay for it. Well, that wouldn't be a problem if you had Atlas VPN. You just hit the little button and suddenly your ISP can't see a thing you're doing. Curses, foiled again. I realize this example is kind of specific, but it doesn't have to be snow globes. It can be like rice pudding. I don't know your dad. For better privacy online, go to get.atlasvpn.com slash barouche to scoop this up for just $1.83 a month before it's gone. The deal, I mean, the, the VPN will still be there. It, you know what I mean. Thank you, Atlas VPN, for sponsoring this video. What the hell were we talking about? If I had to pick one of these tracks as the primary form of Song of the Ancients, it would be Devila's version of the theme. Of the two sisters, she sings Song of the Ancients much more frequently, and her version is also fairly basic. The other forms feel like they started with Devila's theme and then each branched off to become something else. Popola's theme is more textured and has a busier undercurrent, though we never hear it with the main melody in the game. Hollow Dreams is a side quest reward with the main guitar part of Devil's theme swapped out for a jazzy piano. And then Song of the Ancients' fate is almost entirely different, with only the vocal part unchanged. So we'll spend the most time with Devil's theme. Song of the Ancients actually has a lot in common with the track we looked at in the last video, Grandma. They both pair moody minor keys with the soft vocals of Emmy Evans and have similar chord progressions. Also, the rhythm in each is carried by a river of even single notes. A lot of the mood of Devila's version comes from the instrumentation. We often hear snare drum in the Nier soundtrack, but this track uses a hand drum instead, which has a much calmer folk music feel. Besides that, we just have the vocals and two guitars, one strumming each chord as it changes, and one playing that river of notes. But the full chords are barely there compared to the single notes, so we get a more intimate feeling because there's physically less sound in the air. And there's something so peaceful and earnest about acoustic guitar. Despite the melancholy minor key, the guitar feels warm and safe. Lots of music in Nier is easy to wrap yourself up and get lost in, but rarely is it as soothing an experience as it is with Song of the Ancients' Devila. <laughs> Devila and Popola are basically Nier's foster parents. 
When we meet them, they've spent more time parenting replicants than everyone else in the village has spent living. For over a thousand years, they've cared for orphaned and sick replicants as if they were family. They are family. Because Nier is quite capable of looking after himself by the time we meet him, we mostly see the twins acting as village matriarchs rather than caregivers, but every comfort Nier has known since his parents died has come from them. For Nier, Devila and Popola aren't just important people in his life. They're home. The emotions we feel from the Nier soundtracks are made stronger by the fact that all the music sounds so important. A lot of that lives in the vocal parts. 8-Bit Music Theory has a great video about the writing techniques we see creep up again and again in Nier. One thing he mentions is that the melodies very often resolve from a note not in the tonic chord to a note in the tonic chord, and that conveys a grave importance in minor keys. In simpler language, that means the melody briefly dips into uncomfortable territory, but quickly comes back to familiar ground. And the closer the uncomfy note is to the comfy notes, the better those comfy notes will feel when we return to them. In Song of the Ancients, we see this in the form of uncomfy A-flat melting down into comfy G, which is as close as two notes can get in 12-tone music theory. Listen to how the A-flat carries a negative emotion with it, but the melody quickly returns to G as if the vocalist is struggling to keep their emotions under control. All of that is totally normal within our key of C minor, but we also see a couple of notes from outside the key, the leading tone and major third, which in this key are B and E. In minor keys like this one, using the leading tone at the ends of phrases increases the push and pull of tension and release in a way very similar to what we just saw with A flat and G. And then E natural sort of comes out of left field and adds an interesting and memorable twist in the chorus. In this case, it pulls the melody up and into the next phrase. On the topic of the vocal part, let's talk about chaos language. Chaos language is what makes up almost all of the lyrics of the Nier soundtracks. It was developed by one of the lead vocalists on both games, Emmy Evans, specifically for the world of Nier. For the most part, each track uses a different real-world language as a phonetic basis for the lyrics. The idea is that this is what each language might sound like in a thousand years. Song of the Ancients is a melting pot of many different languages just because it was the first song Evans wrote lyrics for and she and the rest of the music team were still figuring out what the soundtrack was. But that works out perfectly because Song of the Ancients is about the fate of all humanity. Some fans have tried to probe these lyrics for hidden secrets, but I love that there aren't any. That makes the music universally accessible with no homework involved. Everyone's interpretations are equally valid. Chaos language is both deeply human and completely alien to humans. Nothing could be more near than that. Real quick before we move on, I want to thank my Patreon donors for their generous support. You're helping me build a life where I get to talk about this stuff all the time, and that gives me the good chemicals. If you'd like to join and vote on future video topics, the link is in the description. Special thanks to Doomer CZ for providing many of the audio files used to make this video. Popola's theme plays in the library that stands on the outskirts of Nier's village. This form of the song is more ambient and replaces the main guitar part with a blanket of mallet percussion. 
There's also some synth whispering in the background, which is interesting to me. Synth doesn't have much of a place in Nier. Despite taking place in the distant future, the game has a swords and sorcery aesthetic. So why is there synth in the library? I'm not sure, but I do think it means something. It's too much of an outlier from the rest of the soundtrack to just be incidental. Maybe it's related to the twins being androids, or maybe it's a symbol that the knowledge held in that library both chronicles the advanced technology of the past and opens a path toward more in the future. But I'm just making that up. We'll never know unless we hear it from Studio Monica, which I'm devastated to learn I've been pronouncing wrong. I was overcomplicating it, it's just Monica. The 2021 remake of Popola's theme is really different from the original. The instrument voices blend together more until it's almost more of a soundscape than a song, and there's even more synth. Again, we can only guess why these changes were made, but in both versions the effect we get is atmospheric instead of melodic. Devila's theme comes directly from Devila, she herself is performing the music. But Popola's theme emanates out of her passively and fills the library as she works tirelessly to keep the village in order. She hasn't joined her sister in actual song for a long time. This isn't necessarily a sad thing, it's just that her priorities have changed. Popola is more left-brained and Devila is more right-brained, but they both offer a safe haven where Nier and the player can both feel at ease. Song of the Ancients' Hollow Dreams is one of the tracks we were listening to earlier. This only plays once, at the end of a side quest where Nier convinces the girls to perform together at the village tavern for the first time in years. The rhythm is totally different, coming four beats per measure instead of three. This is an interesting example of how one melody can work in many time signatures with just a little bit of tweaking. Hollow Dreams extends the lengths of some notes to fill in these larger measures. Let's also pay a visit to Song of the Ancients' Atonement from Nier Automata. I won't speak in detail about how this piece is used in the story because I don't want to spoil two games in one video, but if you're familiar with both games, go revisit the scene where 9S enters the tower and pay attention to the music. I hope that's vague yet specific enough. The track plays during a scene that has an added layer of poetry to it if you know the story of the first game. Okay, I'm done being mysterious. Atonement also plays without lyrics during the tutorial, so I can show that footage at least. Even compared to Nier Replicant version 1.22, Nier Automata's soundtrack features huge orchestral sounds and pounding drums. In Nier Automata, we're meant to feel the weight of the world and look at the big picture, but in Nier Replicant and Gestalt, the stakes are more personal and contained, even though they also end up having global consequences. Since this song is in both games, it serves as a good reference point for how the personalities of the two soundtracks differ. But we'll talk more about Yorha another day. 10,000 years prior, Nier and friends break into the Shadow Lord's castle and get stopped by the last people they were expecting to see, Devila and Popola. They've supported Nier so far because they needed him to collect the sealed verses with Vice, but now that that's done, he's become a threat to their directive. Explaining themselves won't do much good since they are, indeed, working against Nier's own interests, so all they can do is ask him to abandon his quest without offering so much as a reason why. And the player can do that, but if they want story to keep happening, they've gotta stand their ground. And this seems to be harder on Nier than on the twins. Maybe that's because they've become desensitized to replicant death, or maybe they never had empathy for replicants in the first place. But whatever the reason, I'll be honest, you can't convince me that Devil is Evil laugh makes any sense here. 
<laughs> the track that plays here is Shadow Lord's Castle Memory. It's not until much deeper into the castle when the twins try to stop near once more that we hear Song of the Ancients fade. At that point, the player has climbed up through the Lost Shrine and carved a bloody path through the Shadow Lord's lair. It's been at least half an hour since they last heard any form of Song of the Ancients, and they've already fought the twins without it playing. So when the drums of Song of the Ancients' fate start up, unless we have a photographic memory of the fight with Grimoire Noir, we have no reason to think the track playing is one we've heard before. It's not until the vocals come in that we realize what we're hearing. Song of the Ancients' fate is incredibly tragic. These ageless androids have only had each other and this song as constants in their lives. It's a symbol of their bond, what they fight for, and what is precious to them. And it's also the lullaby that, until this moment, always told Nier he was safe. This track has no sense of menace or intimidation. It's just a ramped up, exciting version of a song we already know very well. The heavy drums make it clear that the stakes are high, but without them it would be hard to guess that this track is used for combat at all. As is often the case in Nier, the first goal of the music here isn't to amp up the player and get them excited for their feat of heroism. There is nothing to celebrate in this scene, from any perspective. No matter what happens in this room, this family will be smaller. Even call this a boss battle is a little misleading. The twins aren't twist villains, not even from Nier's perspective. You have your own motives, your own desires. And we have ours. I fear it really is just that simple. Partway through, the percussion and strings drop out, and it's just the two voices over guitar, the way they used to sing together back before they started to drift apart. It feels especially poignant that, in their final moments, the twins share a connection stronger than any they've had in years. So it's a shame that this phrase isn't in the version 1.22 arrangement. Sometimes it feels like Studio Monaco were more concerned with what would sound cool in version 1.22 instead of what would best serve the game. That said, I won't pretend that I don't like the new version of Song of the Ancients Fate too. Kuniyuki Takahashi's orchestrations bring many brilliant new ideas to the music, and they deserve to be appreciated. In this track, in addition to developing the ideas that were already present, Takahashi adds counter rhythms and counter melodies that don't match the original version, resulting in an arrangement that is more complex, layered, and full than the original, at the cost of rawness and intimacy. I know this is tonally a sore spot for some fans, but let's just enjoy this track for what it is, okay? Because it's good music.
For many viewers, this may be the most of Song of the Ancients' fate you've ever heard, because in both game releases, it doesn't play for very long, just until the twins' health bar runs out for the first time. Devila is mortally wounded, and the fight pauses. The music switches to Emile's theme, which might have been better titled the Something Sad is Happening theme, but more on that another time. Popola, so level-headed through the whole game, flies into a blind rage and attacks Nier with everything she has. But the music swings in the other direction as far as it can. Popola's grandstanding falls away, and even the melancholy Song of the Ancients' fate is too performative a sound for the pure anguish of the scene. Instead, we hear Song of the Ancients, Devila. No one stops! <laughs> it's way too late to stop! No one stops! We've spent hours hearing this song in Nier's village. That's not an obstacle in using it in this fight, it's the very reason it works as well as it does. Popola, Nier, and the Shadow Lord are all the same. They would burn down the world for their family. Popola has just lost the one person who was always there for her. And for the moment, Devila is all she and Nier can think about. The music is so dramatic in this scene, not so much because of how the music is written, but because of how it's been used in the story until now, and how it will never mean the same thing again. All this said, I consider Song of the Ancients to be a hopeful song, even though it's in a minor key, even though there is intense pain in the scene where it plays for the last time. Like so many other tracks in Nier, the vocal part gives it a body of yearning and vulnerability. In Nier Replicant and Gestalt, we disproportionately hear it during times of peace. It acknowledges that things may be bad now, but promises one day they won't be. And in the story of Nier, that turns out to be catastrophically untrue. But does that mean hope betrayed Devila and Popola? That their hollow dreams were a waste of time and energy? The moments of happiness they found during the dozens of lifetimes they spent on Project Gestalt suggest no. Maybe the point of hope isn't to make dreams come true. Maybe it's just the blanket that keeps us warm while we chase them.